Good morning, everyone. Today's reading is from Isaiah 43, verses 18 to 19, and it says this. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Well, good morning, friends. As we begin this new year, we have an opportunity to be together. Talk about some things that impact our lives. It's interesting, we come to the end of the year and the same time we start the new year. Well, that means a lot to all of us. And we think of this past year and what we do and what we are to do for God in the new year. And so I want to talk about a couple of things this morning. In the Old Testament, in the book of Exodus, it says to us there in the Ten Commandments, honor your father and mother. Then you get into the New Testament and in the book of Luke, it speaks to us and it's Jesus who says these words. And he talks to a group of people, a whole bunch of them, multitudes, that were following him. And he says this, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife, children, brothers, sisters, yes, and his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Well, the one says, honor your father and mother. The other says, hate them. What does this mean? And the hate speaks about the lifestyle, what people do. You have a choice, I have a choice in life. Who do we connect with and what do they do? How do they live their life out? I want to live my life out doing the will of God. Read an interesting story this week. And they say that people who go to church once a week, get this, once a week, live seven plus years longer on average than people who don't. Well, how long do we live? I was looking at one in the worldwide data information and it says in Canada, men on average live to the age 79.7. Women live to the age 83.9. 79, 83. Boy, I'm beyond what's average. But I go to church every week. In the world, average men live to be 70. Women live to be 75. Women live more than men. What are all these things and how should they impact my life during this coming year and the life that I live? One thing, I'm going to go to church once a week. I'm going to do that. I'm going to honor the Lord. You see, what it's saying about the issue of hate your father, mother, brother, sister, all that, it's hate what they do when they don't do the will of God. That's it. If I want to be a disciple of Jesus, I want to do the will of God and I do the will of God. Doing his will becomes the most important thing in my life. When I look forward to this next year I have, there's one fundamental thing I want to know. God, what is your will for my life? And I've seen it happen many times where people would say something that's God's will and I know it's not. I know it's not. I've had people come to me. I remember one week, I think there were three different people come to me telling me, what God had in terms of future 
and they were all relating around marriage of someone, and they were all opposite to each other. God doesn't tell one thing to one person and an opposite thing to another and an opposite thing to another all in the same week. It just doesn't happen. We want to know the will of God and we want to compare what we think is the will of God to what the scripture says. And we want to know the peace of God in our hearts. Now in God's will, I don't think I don't think God's will is for me necessarily to go to A and W and get a burger rather than to go to McDonald's. I don't think it's God's will for me to really do a poached egg instead of a scrambled one. Like there's a lot of decisions in life that are not things that are God's will from heaven for me to do but things in my life that will impact my life and the future and the people I will contact with. Maybe God wants me to go to McDonald's, meet somebody and share my faith with them and they get saved. That's different. But to say I'm going to McDonald's because I want a certain kind of burger versus what I'd get over at some other place, I think that's my will. In life, we all have things, we all have things that are our own personal will that we do. And God gives us the freedom to make some choices. Whether I wear a red sweater or a blue sweater, whether I wear running shoes or walking boots for the winter, whether I wear a kind of coat that, oh, I got a new coat, a warm one. I love it. Or whether I wear one where I'm out there freezing to death. Like, we have our own things that we do, and we don't find that everything that we do is our will only we want to find out God's will for significant choices in our lives. Whether I f go out and ride in a white car or a black car or a blue car, whether I eat French fries or baked potato, like God has his will for our lives and it will impact things that have a spiritual component to it. That issue in terms of hating the things that relate to father, mother, brother, sister, children, you find it there in Luke 14. That's hating the things that are not what God wants to see happen. They are not his will. They are the will that comes through our fleshly, earthly desires. And we see it in the life of Jesus. He prayed that prayer, not my will, but thine be done. Every time I read that, it impacts me so much and I realize the key element in the life of Jesus was to do the will of God. And in your life and mine, the key element is going to be for us to do the will of God. And if someone around us in life is going in a different direction, God does not want us to open our hearts to that kind of thing and get ourselves twisted up where we're going in a direction that's other than the will of God. He wants us to do his will. Well, what's God's will for you and me? I'm going to talk about that later, but what's God's will for you and me? He has a very specific will. I've told you before, when I was in the hospital, did I pray to go to heaven or did I pray to stay on earth? I prayed to do the will of God. God, I give you my life. I give it to you 
and I want your will to be done. If you've got something for me to do here on earth, then give me the strength to get healed and get over this so I can do the will of God. For Jesus, the will of God was for him to die on a cross. So my sins, your sins, all our sins can be forgiven when we come to him and ask and repent. And since you invited Jesus Christ into your life, I have a feeling that you likely have sinned again and you come back to God again and you repent again and you ask him to forgive you again. And what you want to do is ask him to show you his will and give you the strength to do it. It's not a big fight over what restaurant you go to. But there are things that speak of our morality and our worship and our reading the Bible and our understanding the will of God and our taking steps of faith. I've had times when the Lord has told me to pray for some people and we prayed and God has instantly touched them. And sometimes we prayed and he's taken them home to heaven and sometimes we prayed and he's healed them here on earth. It might be one or it might be the other. But we want to know that we are seeing and doing the will of God. What's the will of God for your life, for your future? What's the will of God in your family, relationships, or in the relationships of the people you know? If you know someone and they're not serving God, you want to pray for them. You want to ask God, is there something I can do or should do to help them step forward in faith in God. Show me what I'm to do. Show me how I'm to do it. Because what we want is the will of God in our lives. In this year, 2023, Lord, show us your will and give us the empowerment, the empowerment by your Holy Spirit to do your will. The empowerment of the Holy Spirit won't be simply that every time everything's easy. Dying on a cross was not easy, but it was the will of God for Jesus. What's God's will for you? For the people around you who you love and you care about? The people who you pray for? What's God's will that you're to do the things to help them so they can get where God wants them to get to and do what God wants them to do and know the will of God? You've got to be careful because sometimes people claim things of the will of God and God's had nothing to do with it at all. It's just their will. And they think if it's my will, then it's God's will. You want to know the will of God, not just your will taking over and you acting if it's the will of God, but really it's only your will. Bring your life to Jesus. Put it in his hands. And pray and ask him, show me what you want me to do. And in 2023, Give me the empowerment of your Holy Spirit to do your will. Yeah, you'll have to forgive some people. Yes, you'll have to move forward. Yes, you'll have to give something where it'll help somebody. Yes, there's a price to do in the will of God. But there's such a blessing that comes from it. Be blessed this year, Lord. We give you this year and pray your hand would rest upon each one of us. Your directions for our path would become clear to us and we'll have your strength to do what you want us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.